why should we hire photographers when AI can do all of it for us? Well, I mean, we do have supercomputers in our pockets. We have supercomputers that we can take out. It connects to the internet. But these supercomputers also have cameras. They allow us to take photos of maybe a cute rabbit or that unfortunate flat tire on the way to your work. The picture might be adorable, just like the rabbit, or deflated, just like the tire. But when you sit there, when you take that picture, what really happens? Are you there you know, fiddling with the settings, learning about the HDR, the high dynamic range? Are you making sure the exposure is great, working on the composition, the color? Or are you just taking that picture? Well, once you do take that picture, congratulations. You're now a photographer. Welcome to the club. But also, photography is the other half of photography is the technical element. When you took that picture on your phone, there have been tons of years of research of AI and all these things pumped into your phone. So you, the end user, when you take that photo, it comes out just the way you want it. Before we get into all of that, let me talk a little bit about myself. So I've been a photographer for about six years. I've done engagement shoots, I've done photo shoots, worked for a magazine, and worked under a professional photographer. And all I thought was, you know, the more I learn my gear, the more I practice, the more I experiment, the more experience I get, I can create my unique style, and it'll be mine. Technology can't really replace it. Or so I thought, you know. I'm also starting to be a data scientist, and Learning this kind of taught me that AI is kind of here to stay. So here's a picture, um, actually a prompt, mountain with a sun. I put it into a neural network called Stable Diffusion, and it generated a mountain with a sun. It took three steps for it, probably about six seconds. It generated, it understood my text, went through a process where it found all its trained repository of images. So let's say all these mountains that it's already learned, all these suns that it's already seen, put it together, use that logic, and output mountains with a sun. You can go online, you can make your own prompt, find a random thing. But now let me show you a mountain with a sun with Trey Ratcliffe style. He is one of the one of my inspirations for photography. He's one of the pioneers in HDR. And when I was like in middle school, I would always go to Google Plus and I would just see his pictures blow up. But one thing that does happen is with a neural network and all these things, that style can be easily transferred. It can be easily made. But one thing I want to talk about with this is the authenticity. When you have the ability to make things like this, when there's a lot of changes, one thing it doesn't come clear is how authentic these images are. They don't have what I would say is the human element. They're missing a certain edge. Or they might just be a little too perfect. If you generate a lot of these, you'll see they're missing fingers or missing eyes and things. That might just be how AI is at this stage. It might get better, it might get worse. But that authentic self really comes into play. But let's see how AI has changed. Um, let's see how AI has changed photography so far. So we have seen stock photography. It has changed in the matter of when you go online and you search up any stock photos for something, it's going to recommend you, hey, why don't you generate them with AI? With so, many, so much innovation in AI, all these stock photos, your product photography, these fields have changed because it takes less time to make from an AI than a human. And that's kind of what's fearful to some of us photographers. We, maybe we're doing stock photography and we have, you know, we're kind of pushed out of our field. But other fields actually remain unchanged. Stuff like fashion photography and elements of maybe documentary or photojournalism. You have to be there in the moment to capture that space and time to really understand what's going on. Or at least in the, um, in the moment of fashion where you, the photographer has to work with your subject. So 
let me show you an example of my manual process. So when I see a photo shoot, I come home and I have maybe two to 3,000 photos from those photo shoots. And those are big images. They're not, you know, like 10 by 20. They're massive. They're 8,000 by 8,000 pixels. And I have to go through all of them one by one and do something what I call a wide edit. I cut out images that really don't fit my, with my thing or they're too dark, too light, anything I cannot bring back. And then I apply my stylistic changes. So if I do my own kind of HDR, I use bracketing. I take a darker image, a brighter image, and I put it together to make the image, the final image, kind of work. And then I take those 10 or 20 pictures that I really want and finally apply my edits to those. There we go, I have my shoot. But with the current levels of AI, it's a game changer. I come home, boom, all my photos are imported. I wish they were edited, but they were all imported. And then it'll start sorting it by you know, face, object, location, time, using the processing that it already has. And then it'll start breaking it down. I start doing my wide edit, it'll do it with me. Anything dark, okay, I won't even see it. It'll give me the 50 images. And then it'll tell me, I'll, I can just ask for a face. All right, now I'm editing this one person's face. Okay, cool, I'm working with it. And then the edits I make, it copies it over. AI just did two days worth of work for me in 20 minutes. And that's how it is for right now. When I tell you this to people, they kind of ask me like, isn't that really taking away from the art of photography? Well, I say not really, because photography has always been about evolving, about new technology. Your camera on your phone, that's a thousand times better than a camera from the past century, where it would take six to 16 hours to take a photo. That process has just been improved, like to film photography, to the digital age of DSLRs, and now we're on the mirrorless age. Well, now we're coming up to the AI age. AI is here to stay. But even with all these innovations, one thing that does not change is your fundamentals for photography. So what does that mean? AI, when you add it to your photos, when you add it to your process, it can make an entry-level photographer more experienced or seem more experienced. But what AI doesn't do is fix things that are out of focus, poorly composed, maybe uninteresting. You don't want to stay between this realm of what AI can do and its limitations. As a photographer, you don't want to fully be in this realm. You want to break out of the limitations. You want to always continue to evolve. So whether you're a professional photographer or someone who just casually likes to take pictures, something you can note is maybe AI can't replace everything. Like imagine your wedding, right? You're sitting there and your photographer comes in and he's like, okay, I already have pictures. And you're like, why do you already have pictures? He goes, I took a picture of the bride, I took a picture of the groom, I used deep fakes and replaced all the people in the venue. And you go, what? That really doesn't have the authentic feel. So maybe a solution I could propose is a camera flying on a very safe drone, flying around, taking pictures that perfectly compose themselves, but a main photographer is focused on the bride and the groom. In this way, even if you know your fundamentals or you're still learning, photography is still really about documenting that space and time. I want you guys to take away three things. Number one, the field of photography has already been changed and will continue to change. Stock photography, product photography, these things are automated now. But your face, your human self, your moment, your time, your capture, these things won't change just yet. Number two, you want your fundamentals. They will never change. And even if you have an AI-based style or a non-AI-based style, your fundamentals of photography will always follow those rules, composition, exposure, things like that, to make that picture look great. And finally, it's still fun to just take photos. So the next time you pull out your phone to capture that special moment, capture that moment of time, or just have a random thing, just taking your phone, just remember, 
what's going on in the background. Thank you.